Welcome to Christ Chapel College, the college outreach of Christ Chapel Bible Church in Fort Worth, Texas. We hope everyone experiences what Jesus calls abundant life, so we unapologetically point to Him as the source of life and joy. If you're a college student in the Fort Worth area, we'd be stoked to connect with you. Find out more at www.christchapelcollege.org and on Instagram at Christ Chapel College. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Francis Janun, the College Guys Director from Christ Chapel College Ministry. We're back here again, continuing our series uh, in the book of Jonah. If you guys weren't able to listen in last week, um, I highly encourage you, if you have a free 15 minutes, go back and tune in because Josh shared with us a really sweet and timely truth uh, from Jonah's story that speaks to our culture in the midst of this coronavirus thing. Um, It was a blessing to listen to, so go back and check it out. But today, I think there's more for us to learn from Jonah's story. Um, and more specifically, from chapter 2, uh, we see Jonah's prayer um, as he's in the belly of a great fish. Um, because the reality is, is that even as Jonah was in the belly of the fish, um, and we being in the middle of this coronavirus thing, we can still hear God. Simply because sometimes we hear God the best when we're at our lowest. And even when we're at our lowest, God still meets us. So with that being said, let's pick back up. Uh, In Jonah chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. Waters closed in over to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon dry land. So after having read Jonah's prayer, um, we can get a better idea or a better picture uh, for what Jonah was truly going through as he was in the belly of a fish um, in the middle of the sea. And as we read this, we, we, can, we can see that this is actually a prayer from a man who is safe to say at his lowest. And honestly, I can't help but feel an odd sense of familiarity or even comfort um, from Jonah's prayer. Um, in that this is a place where even we might find ourselves in right now. I don't know about you, but I know for me that this social distancing has, has kind of started to turn into kind of social isolation, um, <laughs> where I feel like I'm sinking um, and maybe even gotten to a point to where I've hit like a new low or even a new bottom. Um, and similar to Jonah, when we hit our bottom or when we're at our lowest, we can begin to look at ourselves and maybe even see a few things that we've maybe never realized. And from Jonah's prayer, I want to highlight a few things that Jonah realized about himself that I think we can easily relate to. And the first thing being um, is that when we're at the bottom, we see our sinfulness. Jonah understood that it was his rebellion that led to him being in the belly of a fish in the first place. Although we may not know what it's like for our sin to get us swallowed up by a big fish, I think we similarly have rebelled uh, against God Um, but maybe more in just the subtler way of us putting our trust um, and our security in things other than him. Um, For example, maybe we've put our trust um, in our social status of our sorority or our our fraternity. Um, Maybe we've put our assurance and our security in our jobs or our futures. Um, Or even maybe we've believed that our relationships will sustain us. Um, In any of these cases, I um, I think the truth is is that they won't. Um, and when we're at the bottom, our sins like these and um, maybe others start to kind of become more evident and more hollow. And even more so that um, our sinfulness actually stems from a place where maybe we don't want to do everything God tells us. And so we try to do things on our own. And it's funny, though, because these things that we put our trust and assurance in actually surmount to nothing when things get hard. And when we rely on these things apart from God to get us out of those low places that we find ourselves in, um, we just see that they can't. 
Which brings up my second point, um, that when we're at the bottom, we see our powerlessness. Um, about halfway through Jonah's prayer in verses five and uh, halfway through six, uh, Jonah says, the waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Um, and I think uh, Jonah shares two really vulnerable phrases uh, in this prayer that I think shows a little bit more um, as to what Jonah was feeling. Um, because whenever I read this, I get the feeling that Jonah, all, like Jonah's almost saying that all hope is lost. Um, because like, isn't that, isn't that the feeling like we should feel when we're all out of options? Um, like when we've tried everything, but nothing has worked. Um, I think that this is where we're left with the realization that the things that um, I myself put my trust uh, in to keep me secure are not enough. Um, I am not enough. My works aren't enough. My good behavior is not enough. And in my own strength, I cannot get myself out of the hole that my sin has dug. And I think similarly, that's where Jonah was. I think he found himself in a place that he knew he had got himself into and understood that he could not get himself out of. Um, which is why I love what he said in the second half of verse 6 um, and even 7. Um, Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. And even in uh, the end of verse 9, he says, Salvation belongs to the Lord. My third and last point is this, that when we are at our bottom, we not only see our sinfulness, we not only see our powerlessness, but when we are at the bottom, we see God's faithfulness. And as we're going through this prolonged season of uncertainty because of this coronavirus, this truth uh, should bring us so much comfort because no matter where we may find ourselves, at any point during the season, we can find a true and valid assurance in the Lord and in his faithfulness. Which is why I love what the psalmist says in 139 um, verses uh, 7 and 8. And it says, where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol or hell, you are there. So wherever you find yourself today, uh, in the highs or the lows, uh, know that there's a faithful God of the universe that loves you. He loves you so much that he died for you so that sin can no longer keep you away from him. And know that even though there might be more hard times to come, we can still rest and trust in knowing that God is faithful to us and that he always will be. So with that being said, I wanted to challenge you guys with uh, just two applications uh, to give y'all more practical steps in walking out this truth um, in your everyday lives. So my first challenge to you guys is that um, you should see the bottom as an opportunity. Um, I know this kind of sounds kind of counterintuitive just because we want to get out from uh, the lowest part of our life <laughs> as fast as we can. Um, but honestly, this is a really great time for um, all of us to shift our focus or to maybe change our perspective on some of the things that maybe we took for granted all the way up until this point. Um, I know that in my life, uh, a hug from my dad was something that I kind of took for granted. Um, I know that a lunch, a, a group lunch with a bunch of my closest friends was something maybe I didn't um, necessarily take take the full advantage of. And so in this time, we get this chance to maybe uh, look back and see some of the things that we took for granted um, in that the timely truth that Josh had mentioned last week, that in the weeks to come, um, hopefully in the near future, that things will go back to normal. And that whenever things get back to normal, we'll be able to um, hang out with our friends and go to class and have normal social interaction. But with our focus changed and our perspective shift, shifted, that we can not take for granted those things and better appreciate um, those times that we have. And my second application point is this. Um, maybe use your time to read the Bible more or spend more time in prayer. Um, <laughs> I know this sounds um, super Christian, but I mean, since we have more time, why don't we use it to um, lean into the Lord more? Um, or maybe even just use it as time to um, sit and think about all the things that 
um, God has done for us and use those things as we um, live our day-to-day life. Um, And just the thought of it, I think it would be really cool that um, if every Christian were to read their Bible more or to uh, or were to pray more, I think it would drastically change the, the dynamic of the church um, and even more so um, change the um, the presence of the church uh, in culture. Um, and it's funny, though, because it's like I know these things are things that you guys are probably already doing, um, which is great, um, but do them more. Um, it's funny, I've never once heard of a Christian ever having read their Bible too much. Um, but honestly, this may be a great time for that to happen. So who knows? I hope this was encouraging to you guys, um, as it was to me, um, in this crazy time of pandemic that we're in. Um, thank you guys for listening in. Can't wait to see you next time.